Up until this point, every time that I've looked for a pre-built to buy for a video, I just kind of vaguely decide on a budget, go onto a website, and then pick the first thing that looked even remotely interesting to me. Uh, but then I decided I should buy something that I know is relevant to all of you, something that people are buying a lot of. So in standard fashion, I decided to treat Amazon as a generalization for all of humanity's shopping behavior and looked for the most popular gaming pre-built on the website which actually turned out to be a much more interesting hardware configuration than I was expecting. I thought it was just going to be the standard i5-10400F with a single 8 gig stick of RAM and a GTX 1650 in it for around $850. However, the specs were actually completely different. It seems like the most popular gaming system on Amazon is this iBuy power system for about 600 US dollars that has a Ryzen 3 3100 in it, what I assume to be a single 8 gig stick of RAM and an RX 550 graphics card in it, a hardware configuration that I've never interacted with before. So I'm really excited to check out this system. And more than that, I've also never checked out an iBuy power system before. And going off the recent Gamers Nexus video on one, this could be one hell of a ride. Uh, yeah, so with that, let's check out the crap that you all have been buying. As we'd all expect, the best-selling gaming system on Amazon does seem to have a strong emphasis on RGB and tempered glass side panels. We've also got a reasonable amount of damage on the box, so yeah, hopefully this case made it in one piece. Wow, compared to the standard e-waste peripherals you get, this mouse seems like it may actually not flare up your chlamydia. Uh, well, I'll, I'll use it and then let you know how it holds up. However, the keyboard does seem to have the standard e-waste peripheral build quality. Ooh, we get a link to a free gift. Hopefully it's not malware. Over here, we have reasonable packing foam with a plastic bag that, I don't know, makes it feel a little bit like this case was just carelessly stuffed into a box. Oof, it's got a strong smell. Why does that smell so chemical? Like that puts AliExpress chemical smell to shame. Holy crap. I feel like the bags may be a little big. There we go. Wait, where's my mouse pad? It says clearly that it comes with an Element Mini Pro mouse pad and it's nowhere in the packaging. Oh, that's zero out of 10 right there, I buy power. Starting off with the front, we can see we have two RGB fans behind a mesh front, which we know is good for airflow. The front IO is perfectly inoffensive. And then we've got this slot that's barely a finger width for the airflow. Around the back, we've got a bit of instruction telling us to not use the HDMI on the motherboard. Let's actually see what this IO looks like. Uh, it's possible, it's fine. Ugh, the sticker leaves a bunch of like glue residue on the back. That's, that's not good. They could have just used a bit of tape or something. I find the sticker really weird because it says here that it's assembled from tested components, which is good, but then they stipulate under there that the complete system is not tested. So the system could not boot due to like assembling issues and they wouldn't have caught it at the factory. Yeah, that's, that's a bit weird. Uh, down here, we've got the graphics card. I'm assuming that's the RX 550. And then we've got another bit of instruction on the power supply here, which says that we need to read instructions about removing the foam on the inside of the system. And then around the side, we can't actually see the components in here because of all that packing foam we need to remove first. Now inside the system, we've got decent cable management. Everything seems to be plugged in properly as well. Although the front IO headers are just about to wriggle free down there. Now, when it comes to the component choices, first off, we've got the infamous single stick of RAM. However, in this motherboard that only has two RAM slots, I guess it kind of makes sense for future upgradability. Although considering that this is a Ryzen CPU, I would definitely factor a RAM upgrade into this purchase. Moving over to the cooler, we've got something that looks like it would be embarrassing to whip out on a first date. The motherboard is an ASRock A320MAC, which is fairly standard for a lower budget AMD based system. It's not a great motherboard, but I, I guess it'll get the job done. And then down here, we've got some ASRock variant of the RX 550. 
And then we've also got a bit of like cable tie hanging there randomly. I don't know, that bit of cable tie there looks a lot like it's bridging a connection between the PCI connector on the graphics card and that capacitor on the motherboard over there. Uh, I'm gonna leave it there and see what it does just because, you know, out of the box testing and all that. The back is a bit rough. Uh, there was definitely a whole lot of stuffing going on here. At least there's the occasional bit of cable tie, but um, yeah, this isn't as good as that Lenovo Legion that I recently looked at. Now, when it comes to power supply, they do that very strategic thing where there's no information about it on the side that you can easily see. So yeah, we're gonna have to take that power supply out and see what we're working with here. The power supply is a 500 watt 80 plus bronze rated unit by a company called Channel Well Technology. Um, yeah, I think this is where the strong chemical smell was coming from. I don't know, this power supply is about as confidence inspiring as a coal mine where the canaries keep dying. And then the SSD is something called a Neo Forza 256 gig drive. I've not heard of that company before. Uh, I'll do some tests to see how that performs. Okay, so on first impressions, I guess it's kind of better than I was expecting. Although I was half expecting a medium-sized highway pileup, so it's not like it's not like my expectations were particularly high. Uh, yeah, let's put it back together and see how it runs. Okay, that was good. Uh, n nothing exploded there. Okay, it's VD time. Um, this is just fairly standard Windows VD, although there is like an iBuy power. Does it just take you to their website? Oh, need internet. Oh, it just takes you to their review site. Wait, so do you only get a reward if you give them a positive review? <laughs> that's kind of the implication there, but I'm, I'm sure that's not how that works. Uh, anyway, okay, so that is what that button does. And then we do have some AMD drivers on here, so that's good. And yeah, I mean, that's actually way better than I was expecting. The, the VD situation on this iBuy Power is pretty decent. The drivers on here are actually up to date. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that. So that's pretty cool. Gaming wise, we're starting with an old fan favorite, GTA 5. This is, um, Oh, this is already going better than I was expecting. Uh, I'm using 1080p here, all normal settings. So it's pretty much the lowest settings at 1080p for GTA 5. And yeah, we definitely have some headroom here because we're averaging about 100-ish frames per second, it seems. Component temperatures are also good so far. Okay, so even with slightly higher graphics, so we've got some anti-aliasing on here and a like tessellation has been set up with a bit of anastrophic filtering as well. We're still in about the mid 80s to low 90s. So yeah, this is this is definitely better than I was expecting considering what I've, oof. Oh. So here we have CSGO, 1080p, all low settings. Uh, I've played a couple of matches and it, it's okay. Um, it's not an amazing CSGO experience but i guess it's like a minimum acceptable kind of performance to be competitive online there is the occasional hiccup and like frame drop and stuff that's definitely noticeable yeah if you're like a high level csgo player this may not work for you but if you're more of a little newbie maybe i will say i am surprised at how good the cpu temps are it is only pulling about 25 watts at the moment. Rainbow Six Siege here is running at 1080p and we've got the medium preset going. Um, no, it's about 60 frames per second. This is okay. Like it's, it's like minimum acceptable. Again, the same as with CSGO. Uh, in medium settings, 1080p, it's not going to give you a hernia or whatever. Okay, so at this point, I guess it's quite make or break for this system, whether or not it can run Fortnite. And with 1080p, oh, is that another player? Yeah, I think so. Ooh, I need to get closer. Wait, what was I saying? Oh yes, it's important that the game runs fine. So here with 1080p competitive settings, um, yeah, it, it feels okay. Like this is very playable. It's not gonna win you any EPIN points online, but that's what the RGB and the tempered glass is for. So yeah, you've got all your bases covered here. Ooh! 
Now something a bit more demanding. This is Battlefield 5 1080p with low settings. This is not what I would call a usable Battlefield 5 gaming experience. Uh, the frame rate will definitely be oh, holding you back. And uh, there are going to be times where you die very frustratingly because of like frame rate dips and stuff like that. So even at low settings, Battlefield 5 is a bit of a no-go. Performance-wise, the system is fine, I guess, if what you're looking for is like a possible eSports gaming machine. The problem is, though, that the performance you get out of this system is very comparable to something like an old Optiplex with a GT 1030 in it, which just... That feels so rough for $600. Like, there are advantages to this system over an Optiplex. Like, you've got an upgrade path, you've got tempered glass RGB and EP and all that. But still, $600 for basically GT 1030 performance. But on the performance front, you can't even really recommend an old Optiplex with a 1030 in it anymore because even the 1030 has become this weird, rare thing that you need to spend your entire life savings on. However, taking all of that into account, I still wouldn't recommend spending $600 on one of these PCs or any pre-built for that matter. I would save up till I get to about $800 or $850 because um, you'd get a lot more performance for not a significantly bigger outlay. But yeah, all in all, the iBuy power system wasn't nearly as much of a train smash as I was expecting it to be, and it shows you that even within the same manufacturer, there is quite a big variety in the condition of a system that you're gonna get. And if you end up actually buying an iBuy power system, you just need to hope that whoever's building it wasn't drunk and or on drugs at the time. And with that, it brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.